Hi there! Have you ever wondered what the best note-taking method there is for math? Well, I did. You see, throughout my journey as a BS Math student, I explored various ways of taking notes. From my first to third year, I tried taking notes on paper, like using the Cornell or Flow method. I also tried using a digital pen, like tablet, iPad, or a writing pad. And I also tried typing on a laptop, using Overleaf, LaTeX, etc. During my final year, I tried the most unexpected note-taking method in math that you could possibly think of. I took zero notes. Yes, you read that right. Zero, as in nothing. Out of these four, or we could narrow it down to three, which do you think skyrocketed my grades the most? Well, I have the answer, and it may not be what you expected. Let me ask you a question. Why do you take notes for math in the first place? Well, obviously, it's for capturing information. But going further, for what? Why do we need to capture information? As students, we need these for studying and reviewing. But diving even further, for what? Why do we study and review in math? It is because we have assessments. This is the bottom line answer to our first question. We usually take notes in math for our assignments, problem sets, exams, etc. We need to record information for later use. But what if the information can already be found in math books? Should we even bother taking notes in class or not? Well, according to Thomas Corner, a British pure mathematician, most math students actually find it easier to learn from lectures than books. Here are his three reasons why. First, lectures are dynamic while books are static. A lecture gives you the flow of the lesson while a book is only made for inspection. Second, a professor points out the prerequisite essential concepts or the basic stuff during class while a math book assumes that you already know it. And third, math books show us how to write mathematics while lectures on the other hand shows us how to actually do it. With all that being said, this means that we should indeed take notes during a math class, right? Well, not so fast. We haven't talked about its counterpart, which is focus. In a class, there are two things that your attention can be put on. Either you are focused on your paper or your teacher. Personally, I do not like multitasking. I think that it is inefficient. Let's say these two bars represent your focus on your paper and teacher. If you think that you can give 100% of your focus to both these areas, then think again because you can't. You will certainly divide this into two. You might focus more on your teacher or on your paper. Either way, something has to give. For me, it was my paper notes. This helped me focus more on my teacher but left me with zero notes. But what if there is a way to bypass taking notes so that we could focus entirely only on our teacher while capturing every detail of the lecture? Let's find out later if that is possible, but before that, I would also like to talk about what should you actually take note of in a math class. In my experience, I tried a lot of things, from taking note only of definitions, to theorems and formulas, to including examples, and then ending up realizing that I need to take note of everything. That is math. You need to take note of every single detail possible. But if I have to choose one, sample problems like proofs and examples would be number one. According to Cal Newport, author of How to Become a Straight A Student, the key here in math is to record as many sample problems as possible with as many intermediate steps as possible. If you try to search online, definitions, theorems, and formulas are quite easy to find. Solutions to examples and proofs to theorems are the ones that are quite hard to find. Even if you do find solutions online, understanding these would be another problem. So if you don't have a choice, I suggest that you focus on taking note of sample problems with detailed proofs and solutions. So, so far, we have discussed the why and the what. Before we dive into how exactly should we take notes, I would also like to touch on the when. When should you take notes? Poi sensei! During class! Duh! Yes, that is correct. But aside from that, 
I also want to emphasize the power of taking notes immediately after class. According to Professor Marty Lobdell, a professor in psychology, while the lecture is still fresh in your mind, expanding on your notes will be beneficial to fully grasp a lesson. Try to fill in the gaps, if any, and answer the questions that you have in your mind during the lecture. Personally, what I do is that immediately after class, I open my Anki, an online flashcard app and input the key theorems, formulas, identities, as well as solution steps and key points I had in class. This is a key step for me as this converts my passive notes into active ones that I can review every single day. And so now, it is time to disclose my Krabby Patty secret formula which is soon to be not so secret technique that helped me catapult my grade from 0 to 100 while doing less work. My note taking method is all about pictures. And I call this the pie method, with pie obviously pertaining to pictures. Yeah, pretty straightforward. It's basically taking pictures of the board using your phone and then storing these pictures in a folder. Simple, right? Now, hold on, before you close this video, let me share my experience regarding this. Before I tried the pie method, I was kind of skeptical whether this would work or not. Who goes to a class without writing a single damn thing anyway? But I noticed that my usual note taking process is quite inefficient. I take notes during class hours and then review it when I get home. Whenever I review my notes, I notice that there are a lot of gaps in it and I often don't understand a lot of things. So I often take a lot of extra time reviewing and annotating them. Personally, I think that this is very counterproductive as I should be learning during class hours not after. Aside from this, I find myself focusing too much on my notes instead of the teacher during classes. In math, listening to your teacher is very important as they provide the explanation for every solution or proof. You will miss out on a lot of important details if you don't listen completely. Lastly, writing or typing your notes is quite tiring. We attend classes to learn not to be a recording machine. If we can minimize the effort exerted outside learning, then that would be ideal. So given these, I knew I had to make changes. I decided to stop taking notes and start taking pictures instead. How does it work? Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how I use the pie method. First, start by listening intentionally in class. Put 100% of your focus on your teacher and ask questions if there are things that are unclear to you. Second, take pictures of the board. Politely ask your teacher if you could take pictures with your phone in class and make sure to take a picture of everything without leaving a single detail uncaptured. And lastly, review your notes after class. Check every picture that you took, try to remember what your teacher said in that certain picture, and if you use flashcards like Anki, input the important formulas, theorems, definitions, etc. This converts your notes from passive to active. As you can see, the Pi method is really simple. It is important to note though that taking zero notes is not an excuse to be lazy. And by that, I mean do not use your phone for other things like social media or games. If you would not take a picture, make sure to keep your phone or put it facing down. I expect that you put your focus completely on your professor and not on other things. Now one last thing that I want to point out here is that taking pictures actually aids in memory as well. According to Dr. Andrew Huberman, a well-known neuroscientist, if you really want to remember something, take a photo of that thing. It doesn't really matter if you look at that photo again. Somehow, the process of taking that photo stamps down a visual image in your mind that is more robust at serving a memory than had you just looked at that thing with your own eyes. To even further solidify my stance, let us try to compare and contrast this method to other note-taking styles. In particular, we'll have the three general note-taking methods, at least at the top of my head, and discuss why I think taking pictures shines the brightest among all. We will do this by analyzing each method in terms of focus, advantages, and disadvantages. Let's start off with the writing method. This is a note-taking style that uses a pen or digital pen and a paper or tablet, writing pad, etc. Included here are the outline method, Cornell method, flow-based method, mind map method, etc. In terms of focus, I think that 70 to 80% is usually devoted to your paper while 20 to 30% goes to your teacher. The advantages of this are, it's very personal, it's quite easy to annotate, and it's easy as well to create figures and diagrams if needed. 
the disadvantages here are you'll definitely miss out on certain things as most of your focus will be on your paper, it encourages multitasking, and it makes it hard for you to focus in class. The only time that I would consider this method is if the teacher gives out his or her slides before the class. The write on slides method is great since it gives you a timeline of the lesson and all that is left to do is annotate. Next, we have the typing method. This is a note-taking style involving the use of LaTeX, Markdown, PGF, Tix, etc. You may use the following for this note-taking style. I would also leave some links in the description below that you may check to learn how to use this. In terms of focus, it usually has a great balance between focusing on your laptop and teacher, quite 50-50. The advantages of this are, this can actually be faster than writing your notes if you are already good at this. You will also have extra time to take note of what your teacher Say. And you will create beautiful looking notes that you can store online and for future use. The disadvantages here are, it takes quite some time to learn this. It takes more work to put pictures and figures. And you might focus too much on making your notes look beautiful instead of actually listening. Personally, I haven't really mastered this method yet, but several mathematicians say that after some practice, this becomes better than the writing method. I suggest that you try this out for yourself if your goal is to also create beautiful math notes that you can share with others online. Last but certainly not the least is the Pi way. This is a three-step process involving listening intentionally in class, taking pictures of the board, and reviewing these after class. In terms of focus, I would say that 70 to 90% would be devoted to your teacher while only 10 to 30% would go to your phone. Its advantages are, you'll capture 100% of the details of the lecture, it prioritizes focus to your professor, and less time is wasted as it is less tiring. The disadvantages here are, you cannot really annotate your notes. I suggest those that you do this immediately after class instead. Focus may often drift if your attention span is short, and phones are actually sometimes prohibited by your teacher. Despite some disadvantages, the advantages clearly outweigh these. Being able to fully focus on your teacher while capturing the whole lecture is truly next level. If I would rank these methods, we would have the following. Third place goes to the writing method, as it is quite hard to capture everything in math with the use of this method. Second place goes to the typing method. Since it is actually faster to take notes here than the writing method as long as you have mastered this. And of course, the first place goes to none other than the Pi method. Obviously, this takes the number one spot as it gives us tremendous benefits while doing less work. This is the Pi way to optimize your notes in math. Just note that this only applies for math or for other technical classes. Courses that are less technical are a totally different thing. I suggest that you experiment with this and see it out for yourself. Taking notes in math is very important, but it is only one part of the equation. At the end of the day, solving math problems is still the best thing that you could do to really improve your grade in math. Good notes help, but it would never replace actually doing the math. To end, I would like to leave you with a quote by Professor Richard Muller, an American physicist. The trick to good note taking is listening and understanding in real time so you know what is important. Too many students substitute note taking for thinking, then they can figure out their notes afterwards. So always remember to prioritize listening, understanding, and thinking over writing.